In this video, we're going to talk all about speed painting and how to bring your army to the tabletop as quickly as possible. Okay. Welcome, Wargamers. My name is Doug with 2 Plus Tough, and I had a question from a viewer come in named Sam McDonald's, and this question was, Doug, you seem to be able to churn out well-painted armies pretty fast. Would love some advice on how to speed up my painting process, but still pass the three-foot test. Now, if you're not familiar with the three-foot test he's referring to is the painting standard that I paint to called Three Foot Fabulous, which is my own little trademark. Uh, basically, the idea is if you hold a model up close and look at it real close, like three inches away, you're going to notice a lot of mistakes and missing details, things like that. However, these are game pieces, and so if you place it on a game table and stand next to the table as if you were playing the game, you'll notice you're about three feet away from the model, at which point those details get hidden and it looks incredible. Painting to that standard rather than doing things like you might see on Instagram where artists come in and use these as three-dimensional canvases going into hyper detail and all kinds of things. As great as those pieces of art are, uh, I'm talking about the average wargamer who wants a good-looking army and a fun experience on the tabletop. If you've followed along the channel for quite a while, you know that I have gone through several armies, painting them up to about 1,500 points, 2,000 points, looking good, three foot fabulous, and then trading and selling them off. But the rate at which I've been able to do that uh, is far more than other hobbyists can handle. They get very bogged down in detail and things like that. And so this question actually gets asked quite a bit. So I just got a new army, Beasts of Chaos. I'm gonna tell you about my process as I go through painting hordes and hordes of troops quickly and efficiently. Now the most important part to your success is planning. Planning out not only the color scheme, which most people think, oh, color scheme, that's the plan. It's not though, that's the product. That's what you want things to look like in the end. The plan is how are you going to achieve that in the quickest, most efficient way possible with the fewest mistakes. And every good plan for miniatures starts with the same step, and that is color selection. Here's what I would say. Whatever vision you have for what an army should look like, Keeping the number of paints and colors that you have on that model to a bare minimum for that unit is crucial. And by that I mean if we look at, say, a Chaos Warrior here, and I'll go to my Chaos Warrior cam, get this model here, and we see that it has a few main colors, obviously black for the armor, which is dry brushed with a little highlight, uh, but it's a black armor, a white cape, and got some brown for the fur, and some metal for the weapons. And that's honestly most of the model. There's some little odds and ends that I went back and did later, like the horns and the skull, and then the uh, leather for the weapon is a different color. But those are all minor details I went back and did later. The crux of the model is black, silver, white, and this fur. That's four primary colors that take up the vast bulk of this model. Another example we can look at here is this gore from the Beast of Chaos Army has painted. This is with the uh, Gave Spawn uh, color suggestion they have in the battle tome itself. And realistically, I'll kind of pull the paints out here. This is uh, Mornfang Brown, which I'm only going to kind of count this one. Basically, I primed it in a brown that I found at the hardware store, which very much resembles this. So I, I don't even—I never even used the paint pot. But so he was brown before, and then we have Rackarth Flesh, uh, Ushabdi Bone, Lead Belcher. Let's see what else we got. We have. Uh, Rhinox Hide for the brown, and that is these five colors. That's teal for the tabard. That's it. That really is everything on this Beastman. Now, in addition to that, there's also three washes. Uh, Reichland Flesh Shade, Null Oil, and Sewer Water from Secret Weapon Miniatures for the dead guy bit in his chest there. But realistically, that is five paints, three washes, and you have this dude. That limits the number of steps uh, I need, the number of paints I need to buy, because... This is very affordable for most folks and makes things hyper, hyper efficient as we'll talk about in just a little bit. Two things that you might wanna notice when you're, when you're kind of picking your colors and coming up with your palette, you can lump things together. By this I mean any leather straps or pouch or anything, those little bits and bobs that a lot of these little fantasy miniatures tend to have, you can paint all those the same color. For leather stuff, I always recommend uh, Steel Legion Drab is a great one. It takes to washes very well. It's not for everyone, but I like it. And um, if you do them all together, we'll talk about later how you can separate them to make, even though you've painted everything leather the same color, you can make it look different with washes later on. And we'll cover that in just a second. Lumping things together by one color and just being like, all the straps are this, all the armor is this color, really, again, decreases paint palette, which means it decreases paint time. 
Another thing you can do, if you have a large horde of army uh, models, I should say, and you want to make them look diverse, say like Chaos Cultists or something like that, you can uh, really get that effect by having just two or three colors that you put in different places on those models. For example, let's say you picked black, red, and gray. Maybe one cultist has a gray shirt, black pants, and a red accent color, like on a bandana or something. And the next cultist has a red shirt, gray pants, and a black thing somewhere else. And so the idea being you're using the same colors, keeping that number of models and paints down, but you're using them in different places to give the illusion of visual variety. This is a great way to cheat to make it look like you've put more time into the unit, making them look very ragtag than you actually did. So now at this point you have an unpainted model and you know what they want to look like in the end, but how to achieve that efficiently? Well, I think the most important step is paint one model to completion. Really put some time into it and that's going to kind of be your, your reference tool for how everything else should be. When you are painting that first model, be aware of uh, what areas are hard to reach, meaning like what is physically hard to get in there with a brush and paint, as well as uh, raised areas, things, details you might not have missed, things you should be looking at for other models. Just kind of get a sense of what the unit is going to be like in detail. And so with your tester model done, you know exactly what you want the unit to look like. And now we're going to go into the number one step to making this happen and efficiently happen, and that is batch painting. If you're not familiar with batch painting, what it is is say you had a unit of 20 models here, you pick one up and you paint one detail on them, maybe the metal, let's say that for example. So we'll paint all the metal bits on this model. We'll paint the axe, we'll paint inside the shield. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of metal on him, but you know what I mean, the little rivets here and there. And then we're gonna put him off to the side and we'll grab the next model and we'll paint all the metal bits on him and put him off to the side. When we do this, uh, we will have a stack of models that has all of the metal bits done and then you start right back over you pick this one up and then you do the next thing so maybe uh the tabard we'll get that teal tabard in there put him down and grab the next one by doing this you are really focusing heavily on one detail on all the models in that unit and while it might seem very tedious especially the larger the unit you get when you're completed it you will have all 20 done at once and that makes it very very efficient it also means that you're not bouncing back and forth between paints on your palette cleaning your brushes you go every single time you're focusing on one color at a time refining it you know um, because all the models in a single unit tend to be identical you know, okay, this is where the skin areas are, this is where the metal would be. You get very trained in your eye where to find the details that you're looking for with that particular color. One thing that I will add when I talk about batch painting is you are going to miss some parts. Uh, by that I mean there might be a little something on this gore's pelt on, on his side hooked to his uh, waist that maybe another one doesn't have and you might skip this by accident. Now it's easy when you're painting your next step, let's say you moved on from painting whatever that pelt was, uh, to look at that model when you pick it up for the next step and you go, oh man, I went back and missed that. I should go back and fix this. Don't. The idea being the train moves one direction for efficiency's sake. If you notice that you missed something, like say you missed the silver on a weapon or something like that, just put him off to the side and kind of remember that. Because the last step of this is going to kind of fix all those things. Again, we're staying hyper-focused on doing one color and doing it to the maximum efficiency that you can. Now tip number two is going to be painting from the inside out. Now this again, it leads into planning. You have to figure out what parts of the model are hard to reach, but I'll show you what I mean. Now we're sitting here looking at my Herdstone for Beasts of Chaos, and while it's not a model you would paint, you know, a bunch of them of, it's big enough to give you a good illustration of what I mean. If I wanted to paint this fire on the inside, right? I don't want to paint the fire first because then it's going to be really hard to paint all the rock that's around it because then I would accidentally bump uh, some of the rock colors into the flame and I would get it all messed up. So what makes more sense is to start by painting all the rock around it and then go in for the fire because it's easier to reach. In this way, when you do this to say a group of models, let's apply it to something that you would speed paint. Uh, let's say you had a batch of 20 Chaos Warriors. I would start, let me get something I can point better with. Uh, you would want to focus on the armor first. Why? Because it's hard to reach the armpit area up there and uh, the back, uh, his back where it, is, it meets the cape. It'd be very hard to get those things uh, last. And so you're going to start from the inside, the hardest to reach parts of the model, and work your way to the most outward, the closest and easiest to reach. So for him, I started with the armor, get that all dry brushed the way I like it. And then the last thing I did 
was the cape because it's the most bold, in your face, easiest to reach, and it has the lowest risk of me bumping into something that I don't want painted white. Now, of course, this video is focused on efficiency, doing things very fast and, and hyper, I don't know, efficient, something what I can think of. But the reason why this step is doing this tip is so important is because the more you focus on painting the inside out, the first of all, the less details you miss, meaning you're looking for those details. And the second one is the less time you spend doing touch-ups later on because you accidentally bumped one paint into another. And so it makes it very, very simple as far as like, um, again, your plan, your, your painting plan to just focus on whatever is hardest first and then it gets progressively easier and quicker later on. Tip number four is going to be using washes and highlights. If you're not familiar, a wash or a GW shade paint is a very thin down paint that kind of flows into the cracks and crevices and allows you to create shadows and it kind of greatly increases the quality of your painting and your models for a very low cost monetarily, but also like low effort. It just works very well. Uh, if you want more details on that, you can go check out the Warhammer TV site. They have a whole video dedicated to washes, what they are, how to use them, that kind of stuff. But for our purposes, I'm going to assume you already know. Well, here's the thing, how do we use washes efficiently? Well, let me go ahead and show you. When I was painting up this large unit of gore, this was a unit of 20, what I did was I actually, let me get something a little sharper here. I uh, had everything base coated. I had Rackarth flesh on the uh, torso bits. I had the base brown for the fur and so forth. I took Nuln Oil and did all the fur and weapons and wood with that. And here's the efficiency focus on this. While that's drying, I went ahead and did other things. I also did the flesh wash with Reichland Flesh Shade on the torso and arm bits. And then while that was drying, of course, by the time I did all of those on all 20 models, the Null Noyo was starting to dry. So I went back and did some details and started doing highlights on the other parts. Now, here's the thing. Washes are very simple. I'm very heavy with washes. And the reason for that is I don't do any true highlights. When I do a speed painting army or unit, something like that, uh, the base coat for that flesh with rack was Rackarth Flesh. Did the whole thing with that. Then did a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. And then when it was dry, I went back and just did a solid layer of Rackarth Flesh. It makes it seem brighter because I had a heavier wash. Truth of the matter is, it's not pro painting. It's not professional like that. However, it does have contrast. It has a depth of field because the shadows were created by the wash. It just looks simple and fantastic. Again, three foot fabulous is the goal here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do suggest making, like when you're in your effort to cut down colors, making all leather straps and things like that the same color. But this can actually be a strategic step because when you're doing your highlights by putting the base color back over it again, if you choose not to do that on certain straps, all of a sudden you have different tones. And so they look like different types of leather and things like that. Some are darker, some are lighter. And so you can actually, even though you're minimizing the number of paints available, make them look different to the untrained eye. And the fifth step is going to be the touch-up phase, which is by far the most tedious, but realistically it is just taking every model in that unit and looking it over, make sure you didn't miss anything. And this is certainly the longest part because you might have to mix up a whole bunch of different paints and get things where they should be just so you can have you know everything you need to do touch-ups. But it's the little detail on top that makes sure that you don't miss any metal like we talked about earlier or whatever's hanging from his belt. Little stuff like that goes a long way. And that's really it, those five tips, the, the batch painting, focusing on minimizing your number of colors, using washes effectively and timing the way you do things effectively when something's drying, on one part of the model painting something else you can somewhere else on the model. They're all kind of instruments in cutting down time and raising efficiency. But I have some bonus tips for you here, uh, things that'll kind of go a long way. The first one, and quite frankly the most important, is I really suggest you do not go straight from large unit to large unit doing this method. The reason is it'll drive you insane, frankly. And so for me, after I completed my big block of 20 gore, I treated myself to painting up my herdstone, something where it's a single model, I could put a lot of effort into it and it rewards me greatly. I do always recommend going from like a large unit to focusing on a hero or something a little more fun to give you a little more flexibility in your creativity and just doing something else so you don't go crazy. Another important thing that I'm exploring is taking the time to make sure that when you finish a unit, there's always something you can come back and do later if you feel the need to. So for example, on my gore, 
Uh, if I was going for super, super hyper efficient, if I was painting these for like an event or something, I wouldn't do like any kind of weathering. But I went back and did some riser rust on the weapons just to kind of spruce it up a little bit. Spruce it up by making it look rusted and worn. Uh, but the fact of the matter is you don't have to do that. So there's always corner cutting ways to do things. And if you're looking for more resources online, there are a plenty of them. So Warhammer TV does fantastic tutorials on how to do minor effects and paint schemes and things like that. It's a huge resource for you. I would add though that you are able to cut down the number of paints you need to get some of those things done. Uh, a big thing for me is like Xandri Dust and Steel Legion Drab. They don't do vastly different things as far as base paints go. And if you're doing something like Bone, you don't have to buy one or the other. Just pick one and, and be fine for that purpose. Uh, that kind of stuff where it's like, you know, they, they're going to tell you to get a thousand different paints sometimes, but you don't need all of them. Just find creative ways to bring out color and you'll be just fine. Another great resource for you is the hobby cheating tutorial series that uh, Vince Ventrella has over on his channel. I'll leave a link down below where he just goes through, he's been doing it for quite a while, where he goes through just ways to, minor ways to improve your models, whether it's a specific paint scheme or tone, something like that. Always a helpful tutorial to get you started. I will note that he is far more of a professional painter as far as like being entered into um, tournaments for best painted and all those kinds of things. So he's more on the, on the artsy side. I'm more of like, these are just play models and I don't care about the, the artistic. It's not a 3D canvas to me. It's just, it's just a, a game piece. So, I mean, for that reason, he's, his quality is going to be much, much higher than the three foot fabulous. Also very soon with this new setup that you saw today, I do plan on doing a few painting tutorials of my own featuring things like the white on my uh, warrior's capes and the gradient from red where the fire comes out to the uh, cool blue on top of the herdstone, things like that if people are interested. So if there is a specific tutorial uh, or color kind of transition, that kind of stuff that you'd like to see, go ahead and leave in the comments down below. I'm not gonna paint specific models up to the highest level of standards, but if you're asking for a, how to do a technique or a specific type of color, that kind of thing, I'd love to help. Thank you all so much for watching and happy work.